I want you to imagine yourself watching sunset. Maybe you're by yourself, maybe you're with your friends, maybe you're sharing a romantic moment with someone you love. You're enjoying the rosy glow of the light. You're listening to the birds and the crickets. You're feeling the last warmth of sunshine on your face, the coolness of night setting in, and the earth turning away from the sun. Eventually, the sky gets dark, you can see thousands of stars, and there are billions more too faint for you to see. Each of those stars is a sun, just like our own, and so feeling the enormous scale of the universe, maybe you wonder, is there alien life around any of those stars? Are there creatures out there watching sunsets on their own distant planets? To get at that question, we need to talk a bit about exoplanets, planets outside our solar system. Unfortunately, exoplanets are really hard to see. If this light bulb is the sun, then the Earth would be eh, this tiny pebble orbiting way at the back of this giant auditorium. And if we're here in Boulder, Colorado, the next closest star with its own pebble planets would be somewhere across the country, maybe Boston, Massachusetts. So think of those astronomers in Boston pointing their telescopes at us, trying to take a picture of this pebble planet lit by this light bulb sun. That's a hard thing to do. Fortunately, astronomers have another way of finding planets. Uh, we astronomers are actually pretty good at measuring the brightness of stars. Back in the early 1900s, one of my astronomer heroes, Henrietta Leavitt, could measure the brightness of a star to the percent level precision using photographic plates, her eyes, and a comparison tool called a fly spanker. <laughs> Today, with digital detectors and modern telescopes, we can measure the brightness of a star to 0.001%. So, when a planet passes in front of its star, or ball of yarn in this case, when a planet passes in front of its star and blocks some of that star's light, we'll see a little dip in the brightness of that star. And we can also measure how big the planet is, because a bigger planet will block more of its star's light. Thanks to this method and NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, we know that Earth-sized planets are pretty common. Most stars have at least one, so that means there are billions in our Milky Way galaxy, which is just one of billions of galaxies in the observable universe. But to get a sense of these distant planets as worlds, we'd really like to learn something about their atmospheres, what they're made of, what their skies look like. And we can actually do that, but we have to do something uh, kind of terrible. We have to take a sunset, the most beautiful, ineffable phenomenon, celebrated in countless works of art, and we have to try to quantify it and simplify it into a few numbers. I'm really sorry about this, but not that sorry. So light is made up of a whole rainbow of colors but our eyes lump them all into three very coarse bins, red, green, and blue. We interpret color as these three ingredients appearing in different relative amounts. If they're all at 100%, we see white with our eyes. Out in space, the sun emits about the same amount of red, green, blue light, so it's white light. Our atmosphere is what imparts all of the pretty sunset colors. If we look at the sun when it's still really high in the sky, we see it through just a little bit of Earth's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is good at scattering blue light, so it blocks a little bit of the sun's blue light, but it's still basically white. However, as the sun gets lower and lower, we look at it through more and more atmosphere, blocking more and more blue light. So when the sun sets, we can finally say, ooh, pretty. I really like how Earth's atmosphere has blocked all of the blue light, creating an aesthetically pleasing hue. <laughs> I, I might be missing something of the ineffable beauty here. But now we have a way to talk about sunsets on exoplanets. Remember, the thing that we can measure is how much light does the planet block when it passes in front of the star. And the atmosphere counts a little bit towards the total size of the planet. From space, you can see the thickness of Earth's atmosphere. So if you can measure how light of different colors is blocked by an atmosphere, you know what its sunset looks like. Let's look at a specific example. 
There are some exoplanets that are as big as Jupiter, but orbiting so close to their stars that they're basically on fire all the time. We astronomers very creatively call these ones hot Jupiters. <laughs> and thanks to data from telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope, we know what sunset looks like on some of these planets. So let's, let's go. Imagine yourself on a hot Jupiter. Please ignore that you can't stand anywhere because it's a gas giant and it's super hot, like thousands of degrees, whatever, those are details. Um, imagine yourself on a hot Jupiter. As sunset approaches, you turn to your friend and you say, dang, we're on a whole nother planet. And then eventually you catch your wits. Um, and you notice that, gosh, the sun is 100 times bigger in the sky because we're orbiting so close to it. And you watch as that sun sinks low on the horizon and you see it turn a vibrant shade of blue-green, a turquoise sunset. What the, what? Do folks here remember LeVar Burton on Star Trek with the visor? Excellent. When I was a kid, his character, Geordi LaForge, was my favorite, mostly because he was also the host of Reading Rainbow. <laughs> but uh, now, as an astronomer, I also really like that his visor allows him to see thousands of wavelengths of light, not just our measly three. So if we go back and we watch this hot Jupiter sunset with Geordi LaForge, he sees a much richer spectrum he can tell immediately that that bright blue-green color is caused by atomic sodium absorbing wavelengths of light around 590 nanometers. Different atmospheres have different compositions, and Geordi can see something of the composition of this one. And the real-life version of Geordi's visor is called a spectrometer. We actually have one on most professional telescopes. If we point a spectrometer at the sun during sunset, will detect molecules in Earth's atmosphere. For example, those dips at 628 and 687 nanometers are the spectral fingerprints of molecular oxygen. Just by looking at light that has filtered through our atmosphere, we can tell there's oxygen here, as well as water, carbon dioxide, methane, and oodles of other molecules. And on Earth, that oxygen comes from life, from photosynthetic microbes and plants. So if we see oxygen in the sunset of a planet around another star, that might indicate that there's life there, photosynthetic life. I say might because planets are complicated and stars are complicated, but um, still, the idea seems to work. So our existing telescopes are able to observe sunsets on hot Jupiters. And we, Earthlings, are currently building new telescopes that will be powerful enough to observe sunsets on planets that are actually kind of similar to Earth. That's so exciting. Think about it. When we watch sunset from a mountaintop, we get to see light that has picked up the molecular composition of our atmosphere before coming to our eyes. And then there's also a whole bunch of light that passes over our shoulder and goes out the other side of the atmosphere and travels onward for many years until Maybe it reaches some distant telescope pointed at us by some alien astronomers who are just as nerdy about sunsets as we are. <laughs> On the topic of nerdy aliens, I love the movie Contact. Jodie Foster's character, based on real-life astronomer Jill Tarter, searches for intelligent civilizations by the radio and TV signals that they broadcast. Humans on Earth have been broadcasting radio signals for about 100 years, though. That's actually pretty short on the scale of the universe. Plants and microbes have been pumping our atmosphere full of oxygen for about 2 billion years. For 2 billion years, the sun has been broadcasting this evidence of photosynthetic life on Earth out into the cosmos for all to see, broadcasting entirely on the color of our sunsets. So if life like ours is happening on other planets, they might have sunsets that are just as beautiful and just as complicated as ours. We haven't seen any of those yet, but we certainly will be looking. Thank you.